Hello, everybody. Welcome to the chat. Um, let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I've got a bunch of different windows up on my computer and I'm a little confused. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just type in if you can hear me or not. Okay, good. Thanks, Chris. Um, I wanted to do a live stream about the Michigan State shooting. Um, I live in Michigan, and uh, if you're not familiar with Michigan State University, if you're not a football fan, um, Michigan has the University of Michigan and then Michigan State, which is in the state capital of Lansing. They're both huge, huge campuses and have awesome football teams. Um, so anyways, I was up all night last night. I had the TV going. My cousin was texting me back and forth all night. We kept finding strange things. and. Uh, I had about six windows open on my computer watching news live streams. I had the scanner traffic going all night. And honestly, this thing was crazy. Um, I don't really know what to make of it. My channel is a lot of times kind of conspiratorial. So if um, people come into the chat, I just want to give you a warning. If people come into the chat that, you know, say things like, you know, it's fake. Don't fight with them. Don't argue with them. I mean, just let everybody in the chat talk. As long as people aren't fighting with each other, I don't really mind what gets, you know, typed into the chat. Um, Shay, I'm going to give you a wrench so that you, because no one else is in here that's in here a lot. And uh, I'm going to be sharing my screen. And when I'm sharing my screen, it's hard to like talk and pause it and also follow along with the chat, even though I have the chat pulled up on my phone. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Um, so anyways, yeah, Shay, you've got a wrench now. So later on, Michelle and all those guys will probably be in here. They all have wrenches too. But for right now, you're the only one. They can talk about whatever they want, you know, how a lot of them flow. I mean, you're always on Joe Roscoe's channel, so you know. So don't try to shut anybody up or anything like that or put anyone on timeout unless you see two people fighting. Hey, Mike, welcome to the channel, and I'm glad you found me. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of playlists full of Las Vegas shooting stuff if you're looking for that. Um, but I wanted to read this. The MSU police sent this out. Um, last night around 819 is when the shooting started. Um, police reports shot fired occurring on or near the East Lansing campus. Secure in place immediately. Run, hide, fight. Now, how scary would it be to be a student and have that? Now, when I worked at the U of M, we had these uh, university alerts that whenever something happened, boom, they came out from the campus cops. So it says MSU police. So I'm assuming this is the campus cops. So everybody, when we used to get the alerts at U of M, I mean, boom, 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 you just hear everybody's text going off. So anyways, um, the next few videos are some footage I found on Twitter, and then we'll go into some other stuff. You want to get something in front of the door? Bro, yeah. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, just stay in place. Exactly. Stay in the place. No, no, stop, stop, stop. stop. Hey, 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 hey! Get the fuck down! Who's
think it's him. Okay. Now, as the shooting was going on last night, all of a sudden it turned into a Sandy Hook, Oxford, Parkland. And then this morning I was scrolling through Twitter. It only took me five minutes to collect up all these pictures and clips. But as this video goes on, there's going to be a lot of little things I'm going to read that were just really, really interesting tweets. Hello, G.I. Joe. And this was one of them. It's like they have to turn this into political. They have to turn this into gun control. But this was one where they did mention Sandy Hook, which was 12 years and two months ago. And Parkland was a day short of being five years. So here we go. I'm going to hit play again. This is a girl that was from Sandy Hook. And coincidentally happened to be at this shooting. There was also Oxford High School shooting students that were. The reason I'm making college. this video right now is because it is almost. Whoops. This is the Sandy Hook girl. Hold on to your hat, Danny. The reason I'm making this video right now is because it is almost 1 a.m. and I am currently directly across the street from where the shootings at Michigan State occurred. I am 21 years old and this is the second mass shooting that I have now lived through. Ten years and two months ago, I survived the Sandy Hook shooting. And when I was crouched in the corner in school in Newtown, Connecticut on 121412, 12, I was hunched in the corner with my classmates for so long that I actually got a PTSD fracture in my L4 and L5 in my right lower back. I now have a full-blown PTSD fracture that flares up anytime I am in a stressful situation or anything occurs that's aggressive like that. The fact that this is the second mass shooting that I have now lived through is incomprehensible. My heart goes out to all the families and the friends of the victims of this Michigan state shooting but we can no longer just provide love and prayers it needs to be legislation it needs to be action it's not okay we can no longer allow this to happen we can no longer be complacent i'll forever be sandy hook strong and forever be spartan strong okay i gotta tell you i think it was really really sad i cut this guy into the press conference i kind of chopped it up but think back, <laughs> way back to Sandy Hook. Hey, Chuck, how you doing? Hi, Mike A. So think back to Sandy Hook and remember how crazy that coroner was when he was giving his speeches. And then think of like the Robbie Parker thing and then watch. This is the cop at, or the doctor at the press conference talking. <laughs> Didn't get a lot of sleep last night, sorry. So many people that uh, uh, came in. We uh, received a lot of texts that were just, uh, you know, I'm on my way. Just within people showing up, where do you need me? Uh, it was, it was, it was a sad, but. Uh, very proud night for all of us here so i uh i can't speak to anything about uh the identity of the individuals but uh, i'm sure we'll have uh, some time for questions afterwards but uh again everyone is uh, in critical condition at this time but um, um you know actively being cared for by our team at sparrow so thank you all Okay, I had to put that picture in there. I figured it would give some of you a little laugh, thinking back to Sandy Hook. Um, 
These are some Twitter posts I found. Um, Dang, there was at least one Michigan State University student who had attended Oxford High School where just 14 months ago another student opened fire and killed four people. She survived both the Oscar, uh, Oxford High School shooting and the MSU shooting. Okay, what you guys are going to notice. Hey, it'll change in a minute. Oh, yeah, it was Gr Governor Witchmore. I'm in Michigan, so she's my governor. I hate her. Standing by the doctor. I got a clip of her coming up. But anyways, if you guys watch how I put this video together, it's like there's the shooting last night at MSU. Then everybody jumps on. It flows into like, okay, they connect the Sandy Hook crap and the Oxford student crap. Then you're going to see them move on to the Parkland crap. And then you're going to, towards the end, I've got like a whole bunch of like political gun fighting back and forth and I'm a pro gunner. So I don't like when they take these situations and try to use them to push their agenda. But anyways, okay, I'm going to start again. These are kind of like slides. Um, this one's another one that says students targeted an MSU shooting, including critical survivors of the Ethan Carmbley shooting. That was the one in Oxford. One of the shocking facts that the MSU shooting is, shooting is so many of these students were survivors of the Oxford school shooting just 15 months ago. They were high school seniors then and are in college here. There's another current MSU student who also survived a prior shooting in Oxford. Okay, we already know that. Will the media call the MSU shooting a hate crime? I don't know. It was a 43-year-old black guy shooting on a bunch of students. I don't know what he had against these college kids. And this is my favorite one at the bottom. Hey, dumb peeps. People like this coward choose soft targets like schools because they're gun-free zones, meaning it will be easy to murder people because no one can return equal force. Guns aren't the problem. It's unstable people. I believe in that 100%. Yeah, Danny, I know you're here with me, too, and they are pushing these new laws in Michigan, like instantly. They're right on it. And Michigan has really good gun laws for gun owners. And I'm telling you, if they start pulling the kind of crap California and those other places pull, I'll be out of this state. I've got two brothers that live out in Arizona. They got the best gun laws. It's like they can do whatever they want. And it's like, I will move there just for the gun things alone. Um, hi, Cassie. How are you? Um, thanks for ordering. You and Kim. Kim's ordering tomorrow for my Pampered Chef party. Danny, let Lisa know I'm having a Pampered Chef party. It was supposed to end today, but she stretched it out to tomorrow. So if she wants anything for your kitchen to cook your really good, fun stuff, let me know in the comment section. Um, okay, I'm starting again. I keep yakking in between. I'm trying to follow the chat. Okay. Oh, Danny's got a wrench, too, so he knows which people are troublemakers and which ones aren't, too, so Shay doesn't have to sweat it out that much. Fourteen months ago, I had to evacuate from Oxford High School when a 15-year-old opened fire and killed four of my classmates and injured seven, injured seven more. Tonight, I'm sitting under my desk at Michigan State University, once again texting everyone I love you. Will this ever end? Now, honestly... If these kids really have been in two shootings, this is heartbreaking. I can't imagine getting a text from my kid, like the last text, like they think they're going to die, and then for it to happen twice, it's like, to me, that just, uh, that breaks my heart. Last year, we all live in Rochester, so there was the oxygen. Okay, this one... Danny's going to back me up on this girl claims to have been from the rock from the Oxford shooting, but she says right here that she lives. Why isn't it pausing? She says right here that she lives in Rochester. Rochester has their own school system. They do not go to Oxford. There's two towns in between them. So she's a liar right off the bat. So we'll listen Last to Last year, we all live in Rochester, so there was the Oxford shooting. So we sadly had experienced something like this again, and it's awful, and it's something you literally never want to experience ever, and we had to do it again. 
and it's just horrifying. His roommates were like, he was, he got his shoes and he got his coat and he got his keys and he booked it to the door. He goes, I'm going to get my sister. And they were like, no, you're not. And his roommates had to hold him down because my brother was like, I'm driving to my sister. And they were like, no, you're not. My roommate was here by herself. It was probably the most terrifying thing I'll ever go through. And and something you never want to experience. I was on a phone call with one of my best friends when we thought there was someone in her building. And like, I will never like get rid of that feeling. Like, I, like we thought we were saying bye to each other. Yeah. It was scary not yeah. knowing like where what the, was, what was actually going on. And like, every time you heard a new place, you, you know someone in every mm-hmm. building. And I would text that person immediately like, are you okay? And they're like, what do you mean am I okay? I'm like, they just said you're building on the news. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh my God, like I'm getting down. Like I'm getting in my closet. Like it was terrifying. Yeah. Like they said, Acres, Homes, yeah. McDonald, Brody across yeah. campus, literally everywhere Gilchrist, we had people like that we everywhere. love and nobody knows what's going on. So there's like nothing you can even say to make them feel better. It's just like, don't let anyone in. Like we have to get through this together, but it's just, it's terrifying. And- Okay, that last lady it just showed, don't know who she is, but she's supposedly someone's famous that had a niece there. Um, when Danny said somebody looked familiar, I got to tell you, I wish Dub was in here because there's a lady coming up towards the end that I swear that lady Dub keeps saying is everywhere, like borderline and, you know, Jan, who I'm talking about, Danny and Shay. So I didn't compare pictures of them and do all that stuff dub does with like their noses and their eyes and their glasses but this one girl's mom i was looking at her going oh dub's gonna love this so anyways i don't know where dub and frosty are if you have uh oh never any ugly people on the camera i i i wondered too last night when i was watching all this i had the tv on and i had four or five windows open on my computer and the scanner on and the whole time i'm watching these news clips it's like there's cops barely running or moving. Well, this maybe one, two, three shooters are still on the loose. And it's like, there's kids just nonchalantly standing there getting interviewed by the cops. And I'm going, why don't these cops have the police lines way far back if they haven't caught this guy yet? But hey, that's just me. But then again, if there's false flags, it's like sometimes you catch those little things. Um, Callie says, if there was a guy shooting up kids, where the hell are the daily carry people? That's what always makes me question things. What do you mean by daily carry? Oh, I know what you mean. The gun carry. Well, they manage to do schools because they're gun-free zones. And I think personally that that's why it's always the schools that get shot up. Because if they're going to go in a mall or anywhere else, there's so many people that live in open carry states or concealed carry states, and they wouldn't stand a chance. If they walked into a mall or a restaurant or something like that, somebody in there's got a gun's going to blow them away. So I think they hit soft targets. It's seriously these gun-free zones that they think are so great, they don't realize it's backfiring on them. Okay, I'm going to start again. Here comes some Parkland stuff. Waking up to another mass shooting at MSU on the fifth anniversary of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting is horrendous. Meanwhile, our Florida State Legislator wants open carry. Insane. That's funny because you just talked about that, Kelly. Um, And then another guy says, what happened to the other suspected shooters? They just disappeared off the face of the earth. The funny thing is, is this campus is like a little city. It's huge. And there were reports of two, three, maybe even four shooters. So as soon as they nabbed this guy, which, of course, this whole thing was case closed in four hours. As soon as they nabbed him, they told the kids, you can get up and leave. Everything's cool. And it's like. How the hell do they know there weren't two or three other shooters somewhere else? They always jump the gun, and I think that's what gives it away when it's like those kids should have been on lockdown all night. I mean, it was too big of a place for them to search to see if there were other shooters. You know, and as now as, you know, a day's passed by, either the other shooters got into hiding and they don't know about them, but there's CCTV footage all over. So I'm sure if there were, they would have found them. But last night, they couldn't have known when they let those kids back out of lockdown. 
Yeah, I don't get that either, Kim. Here's some posts that showed up on Twitter just bringing up Parkland. Um, like, they always have to tie the other mass murders. five thing. years ago, I know it seemed like Biden. to many of you, when a lone gunman committed an act of horror and violence at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. We continue to mourn the 14 students who had their whole lives ahead of them and the three educators who showed until the end that teaching and coaching isn't what they do, it's who they are. You know, to the survivors who carry the trauma, to the families who lost a piece of their soul, I have some idea how hard it is today. It brings us all back, everybody back, just like you heard the news a moment ago. But what I admire most about all of you is how you found purpose through your pain. The world has already seen how strong you are, how resilient you are, and how giving you are. Whether it's organizing nationwide marches, or using your own voices, you've helped me take more executive action to reduce gun violence than any of my predecessors at this point in the presidencies. We've reined in ghost guns, cracked down on gun trafficking, increased resources for violence prevention, and we stood together as I signed the most significant gun safety law in nearly 30 years. But there's so much more to do. We have to ban assault weapons like the one used in Parkland, they used just five years ago today, and in so many of the mass shootings in America. For the lives lost, the lives we can save as a nation, we must say enough is enough is enough. We, just, we have to do more. We have to do more. God bless the 17 loved ones who lost, the countless loved ones left behind. May God bless you all. Got to meet almost all of you. You're an incredible group of people. There's a shooting last night, and he's on TV today giving this whole speech about Parkland. And to me, that was like, what the fuck? Why aren't you giving this speech to the poor parents from MSU? My heart breaks for you. It really does. Okay, this is a statement that Biden put out early this morning, and I'm not going to read it, but if you want to later, like, rewind or go look for this on Twitter or something, he talks about Parkland, he talks about a state of a union, devastated by gun violence. So anyways, it's kind of interesting to read, but it's too long, I'm not going to read it now. <laughs> I get you, Kelly, and gun-free zones and arm everybody. Oh, wow, Kim, you're 20 minutes away. When we were doing Parkland, we had people in the group that we were actually sending around looking for different people to interview. That would have been great if you would have been in our Parkland group because we could have used you for some little errands. <laughs> okay, so there's Biden's statement. Hey, Matt, I knew you were going to be at work, so I'm glad that you got here. Um, Go ahead and just listen. Right now is a pre-recorded video I made. I'm just interrupting every few minutes to uh, jump in. Hey, Scott. Um, hey, I was going to ask, do you remember who the person is that recently got their YouTube channel removed but didn't have any videos, just was a commenter? I thought I saw that comment somewhere recently, and I can't remember who it was. All right, this is... Danny, I haven't seen one yet. I guarantee by tomorrow there will be a Vegas survivor that has a student at this school, just like the borderline Thousand Oaks thing. But I will bet I'll put 50 in on that. OK, this is Gretchen Whitmer. We had the fake governor, you know, murder plot against her that turned out to be a whole big FBI sting where the FBI was trying to lure these people in to do it. So that got thrown in the trash. So she is a huge gun grabber and she just got, I think, reelected either that or she had a longer term. I'm pretty sure she got reelected and uh, recently and I can't stand her. I mean, I was all for the assassination. I shouldn't say that on here. But anyways, I just can't stand her. So here's, I. this is part of her speech. I spliced this stuff out because each of these conferences were like 20 freaking minutes. So I just kind of chopped and spliced like what I thought you guys would find interesting. But you can find them on YouTube if you want to watch the whole thing. Loss of beautiful souls today. And pray for those who are continuing to fight for their lives. Every Spartan student, 
parent and staff member should know that Michiganders and Americans everywhere are thinking of you today. President Biden and I spoke last night. He pledged his support and the thoughts of an entire nation. And we will work together to do what is necessary to help MSU community heal. We're all broken by an all too familiar feeling. Another place that is supposed to be about community and togetherness, shattered by bullets and bloodshed. We know that this is a uniquely American problem. Today is the fifth anniversary of the Parkland shooting. We're mere weeks past the Lunar New Year shooting at a dance hall, and a few months past a shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde. And looking back at a year marked by shootings at grocery stores, parades, and so many other ordinary, everyday situations, we cannot keep living like this. Our children are scared to go to school. People feel unsafe in their houses of worship or local stores. Too many of us scan rooms for exits when we enter them. And many of us have gone through the grim exercise of figuring out who our last call would be to. Last night, a lot of kids on this campus made those calls. They worried for their lives and for their friends, for their fellow Spartans. Parents across Michigan were on pins and needles, calling their kids to tell them that they love them. As parents, we tell our kids, it's going to be OK. We say that all the time. But the truth is, words are not good enough. We must act, and we will. But today, let's hold the MSU and East Lansing communities close. And let's think of the families and friends of those who have lost, those fighting for their lives, and the countless Michiganders whose lives are forever changed by yesterday's shooting. We will get through this together. And we will do it with the full support of the state of Michigan and the U.S. federal government. As the representative of Oxford, Michigan, I cannot believe that I am here again doing this 15 months later. And I am filled with rage that we have to have another press conference to talk about our children being killed in their schools. And I would say that you either care about protecting kids or you don't. You either care about having an open conversation about what is going on in our society or you don't. But please don't tell me you care about the safety of children if you're not willing to have a conversation about keeping them safe in a place that should be a sanctuary. Now, the Spartan community is incredibly uh, connected and proud. We've already seen people come together. But for me, the most haunting picture of last night was watching the cameras pan through the crowds and seeing a young person wearing an Oxford Strong sweatshirt. The sweatshirts that were handed out after those kids lived through a school shooting 15 months ago. And we have children in Michigan who are living through their second school shooting in under a year and a half. If this is not a wake up call to do something, I don't know what is. In the meantime, I feel confident that our law enforcement is doing everything that they can to understand the situation. I'm thrilled that federal law enforcement is on scene bringing their resources to the fight. <clears throat> We're not gonna rest until we understand but I think the fact that we're having this conference so quickly after another mass shooting in our state should be a statement in and of itself. Thanks very much. Okay, hang up. I got to back up because now we're getting to my good stuff. Um... Now, why is it backing up so far? Where was that crazy lady that was just talking? Okay, there's Whitmer. That lady that you guys said stuff about um, was a congresswoman, but I'm trying to find where she was because there was good stuff I wanted to read after her. Shoot it. protecting kids okay here we go our society or you don't but please don't tell me you care about the safety of children yeah she's a you're, congress you're not willing woman. to have a conversation about keeping them safe in a place that should be a sanctuary now the oh, Spartan funny, community Mike. is incredibly uh, connected and proud we've already seen people come together but for me the most haunting picture of last night 
was watching the cameras pan through the crowds and seeing a young person wearing an Oxford Strong sweatshirt. The sweatshirts that were handed out after those kids lived through a school shooting 15 months ago. And we have children in Michigan who are living through their second school shooting in under a year and a half. If this is not a wake up call to do something, I don't know what is. In the meantime, I feel confident that our law enforcement is doing everything that they can to understand the situation. I'm thrilled that federal law enforcement is on scene bringing their resources to the fight. <clears throat> we're not gonna rest until we understand, but I, I think the fact that we're having this conference so quickly after another mass shooting in our state should be a statement in and of itself. Thanks very much. Okay, that last one is the one I wanted to read, but then when I tried to zip back to it, couldn't get it. I might have to just skip it. Hang on. I had some good gun ones in here. All right, I gotta remember to pause or. If this is not a wake up call to do something, I don't know what is. In the meantime, I feel confident that our law enforcement is doing everything that they can to understand the situation. I'm thrilled that federal law enforcement is on scene bringing their blah, resources blah, blah. to the fight. <clears throat> we're not gonna rest until we understand. But I, I think the fact that we're having this conference so quickly after another mass shooting in our state should be a statement in and of itself. Thanks very much. Okay, here's a Twitter thing I saw. A big fuck you to people who don't believe we need gun laws. Students who survived the Oxford High School shooting are in MSU. They are going through this again. When will you wake up? Well, you know, we are awake. Sorry, dude. I should go to the next one in a second. Okay, there were multiple, I'm not going to read these, but there were multiple videos, or not videos, pictures and tweets, you know, showing that, you know, the Republicans wanted unfettered access to assault weapons, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through these. Um, there's a few of them. It pissed me off when I read them. Fuck your thoughts and prayers. Fuck the NRA. Fuck you for accepting NRA blood money and doing nothing while people keep getting shot to death. Fuck your lame excuses. Fuck your sick codependent relationships with the NRA. Pass some fucking gun control laws. This dude's got a really bad attitude problem. And apparently, if he carried a gun, he would be safe because people don't shoot people that have guns. There you go, Kelly. Makes sense to me. The MSU shooter couldn't legally own a firearm, but Democrats can't let a mass shooting go to waste. Keep pushing the narrative. I loved this tweet. Because this guy had just gotten out of jail. He had... Uh, a prior record he was not allowed to own a gun but yet he ends up with a gun which wasn't an ar-15 it was a handgun so that blows the narrative he was black and usually it's a white white supremacist trump fan and this totally blows the narrative and uh they're pushing the gun control stuff and it's like well wait a minute this guy wasn't supposed to own one to begin with so he doesn't really fall into the mold Gee, the latest mass shooting was done at MSU yesterday. Mass shooter was black. He killed three people, wounded five. He did not attend MSU. The mass shooter then turned the gun on himself. Mass shooting done. Mass shootings done by black men, and he names off all these black men. So this guy must be white complaining about black people. And I don't really think it matters if you're black or white. If you're a bad person, you're a bad person. Um, hey, Drudge, what happened to the MSU mass shooting story? I guess it doesn't fit your agenda. If the perp was a MAGA, it would have been your lead story. I thought that was funny. As a student at MSU who lives in the path the shooter took, if you are some conservative dickhead who isn't anywhere near MSU, I don't want to hear shit from you. Well, fuck you. These were like some arguments going on today on Twitter. 
Thanks for letting me know. There's three of them. These are texts going on during the shooting. They, they're literally less than a block away from me. Keep your piece loaded and doors locked unless it's a cop. Blast them. Trust me, I'm already ready. I thought that was great. That is how everybody should be. If you're prepared and you're ready, you don't have to be cowering somewhere. I mean, I know the students at the school can't carry guns, but there's enough campus security, teachers, college students are grown adults. So you don't really want, I mean, they don't, you can't be giving them all guns or there'll be shootings all over. But the cops in a lot of these videos I saw last night are standing around. There's no rush, no urgency. You know, you saw the one video I showed earlier where they were pulling the cart out of the ambulance and it was like, lo -de do -de do you know, slowly as they could go. And it's like, it always seems to be like this at the shooting. The cops are either asked to stand down or they're, you know, just lollygagging around. I saw a bunch of cops laughing at their posts last night. And it was like, seriously, they haven't caught the shooter yet. You have kids cowering, scared to death inside. And you guys are sitting out here telling jokes. So, yeah, I never really like how the cops react in these. I mean, the hero cops that go take care of the stuff are good, but not these other ones. Here's a good question. How did the shooter get three miles from campus while shots were still being fired from campus? If you were listening to the sc scanner last night, you would have noticed that. In the wake of the MSU shooting and mourning the Parkland and NIU shootings, Don Daly writes about permitless carry. It's a cruel, calculated political game with the lives of innocents as pawns. Well, I think you guys are using them as pawns, not us. So, yeah, this was more of the Twitter arguing. All right, here's a good one. Guy kills four students in Idaho with a knife. No shits given about the weapon. Guy kills three at MSU with a gun. It's all about guns. Do they really care about safety or using the MS shooting as an op to grab guns? Bingo. Um, another guy says, going to try to stop arguing about gun control, but we need to start thinking more about our survivors and victims and the only place in the world that schools are constantly shot up. This poor woman that survived Sandy Hook as a kid and now was right next to the MS shooting last night. Well, we already covered that earlier. Um, let's see what we got next. Some of these slides I put together so quick, I don't even know if I have them in the right order. Here's another picture. You know, I told you they were posting stuff. You Republicans think it's cute, blah, 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 blah. I found this picture. I thought it was kind of funny. Someone had like the picture of the cycle. Um, this is the shooter, supposedly the only one shooter that conveniently shot us off in the head. So, you know, there's no trial with no evidence. Um, this guy says, a known felon is the shooter. He could not legally possess a firearms. Law enforcement has been called to his home in the past because he had um, he would shoot out the back door. Yet he was walking around. Bad people do things. Stricter gun laws won't stop them. 100% I agree with that. Um, I'm not following the chat right now because I'm reading these things. So if you guys have questions in there, hopefully other people in the chat answer them for you. I don't want you to think I'm ignoring you in the chat. I'm just uh, rolling through this. And that guy's name was Texas Todd. So we know where he stands. This is kind of sad. This is a rock that they painted that's outside of Michigan State University. Okay, listen to police ditch. Whoops. This is the police dispatch communication just during the two minutes when they apprehended the shooter. So um, I didn't collect the whole scanner for you guys. There's just this little blurb. Clear shot fire. Clear shot fire 2349. Subject down. DC 11 from Fire Center. 347, be advised. Lake Lansing and Larch. MSP found this subject. Who matched the description when they made a approach? He shot himself. I don't know if it's related, but it matched the description. Victor two. It's a V there. Copy. Victor two, it looks like he's uh, self inflicted. Um, I'm looking for a couple more to come home to clear. Render eight. Three oh three, I'm clear out. Hey, hold up. Three four seven, Lansing Township, going through to a mess. Do you have a mobile artist team? You get up there. 
Is there a mobile RTFD? Is there a mobile RTFD? Guys, Lansing is out with a subject at Lake Lansing at large. Uh, the subject matching the accused is... Clear. Sixteen more mobile. We'll go. Sixteen more mobile. We'll go. Someone about to pull out. Okay. Clear. I got medics around. Is it safe for them to come in? Uh, officer Bass seven eight four. Officer Payne with Meridian Township for your welfare. Uh, officer Bass seven eight four. Officer Payne with Meridian Township for your welfare. Yeah, I got to contact you when I go up and uh, join Renry. Five feet of coming. Good. Good. Copy. Copy. This is 493. I sent the email to both you, 484, and 482. 1635, sir. Medics. Medics are in route conscious breathing. What's the status? Yeah. 136, he's not moving. Uh, GSW, that Can you recruit as you do? Okay, I'm sorry, I was going to get a hold of the mercy. That was just a little picture I thought was kind of funny. Um, hang on, i got to back up, though, because... There was another one I wanted to show. Who is she? I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry, I was going to get a hold of her. Okay, I found this online and I just thought it was funny. Guns used to kill children. It's not a right. We need to ban all guns. Abortions kill babies. It's not a baby. It's just a blob of cells. I thought it was funny because they showed that it was the same person. And that made me think about Dub, how he's always saying, oh, he finds the same people at different events. But this is actually just a meme somebody made up. But I thought it was cute. Okay, Jim, Trump 2024. Anthony McCree, a black guy, say it, a black man with a handgun. Stop refusing to acknowledge the race of a murderer, and he used a handgun, not a white supremacist with an AR-15. Why do these people refuse to give actual details when not a white man with AR-15? Yeah, they're going to sweep this under the rug pretty quick. It's kind of already leaving the news cycle because it doesn't fit their normal narrative. They want to blame this all on white gun-toting people. And, and ban the ARs. Suspect was... If the suspect was white, everyone would be saying he was mentally ill and abused by his parents. But since he's black, they say it's because black people are violent and they bring up his arrest record from 20 years ago. Yeah, I thought that was kind of tacky that they dug 20 years deep into this guy and published it in the newspaper. Like, I did a lot of stuff 20 years ago and I'm wouldn't do it today. I wasn't in jail, but okay. And Dennis says, I've had it yet. Another deadly shooting at MSU. Oh, here we go. He's going to blame me. I blame Republicans for these shootings because they refuse to do gun control. I wish Boebert, Gene Cruz and the GQP could, could be put into these shootings so they could feel the terror these people feel. What what these crabby people like Dennis don't understand is there are already plenty of gun laws. There's restrictions. All of these shootings, the people legally obtained their guns or they got them from somebody else that had them. You know, we aren't hearing about shootings where somebody's illegally obtaining their guns. I mean, they are illegally if they're like stealing them from their parents or whatever, but it's like a gun control law isn't going to force a kid not to be able to get his parents gone or his best friend's gone or his neighbor's gone or break into the house next door. So it's like, there's plenty of good gun control laws if they would just follow them. Let's see what we got coming up next. Yeah, what about Chicago, Mike? You're right. Okay, this one coming up 
is a crack up. Pay attention, Danny. How convenient the government's paid actors already gave an interview. MSU, MSU shooting. Don't fall for the distract, distraction. Watch the interview of these girls. Um, it's very weird. And Mike, your thing about Chicago, I live in Detroit, so I'm right there with you. That stuff never makes national news, and it happens all the time. Um, okay, so let's watch these girls. On top of each other to get out, like climb scaling tables, jumping down entire flights of stairs. Do they look scared? Yeah. Just sprinting. And keep in mind, this is freshly when we had just barricaded these doors. It's a it, car. it took them minutes. We ten finished blockading the door. At least. It, it took them minutes to even let us convince them to, to blockade the doors. And there was and no by, security. It was just lunch lady. Exactly. And by the time... Okay. No security, just lunch ladies. This is 8.15 at night. I've not been on a campus at 8.15 at night, but are the lunch ladies still on duty? We had, we were already running. There was nothing we can do. There are people still doing the dishes, staff still doing their jobs. Like, people think these things aren't going to happen to them until they do. And it's, I, I, I can't think, I can't speak. I'm probably going to wake up tomorrow and think this was a fever dream. I genuinely have no words for this entire situation. We had so many, like, gun drills in high school, but it was never real, yeah. and it was never... Gun drills, I always love when they mention that name. Ha, huh, I see Danny too. It was always soft lockdowns because it was like someone wrote something on the wall. I was but now it's like real. And they didn't even, they, the high school treated this with 10 times more urgency than they're treated. I agree. I am sick of seeing the non-urgency. Absolutely. I was talking to my best friend, Rada, one of one of our best friends who is I'm now locked in a building over there. Yeah. Um, we were talking about this on our way to drop my partner off and we're like, yeah. These things still happen. Gun violence is an issue. This is an issue on campuses and high schools. Any educational institution. We were literally talking about this issue yesterday. Yes, because you're gun-free zones. That's why they're targeting you. And never did I think this would happen the next day. I, I, I literally, I have no words. I, I really don't. And, and just given the fact that they were talking about this, this person may still be out there. We know that the, a scene we had is I am East, which is pretty much right where we're at. We know that was a confirmed scene. You're getting reports just anecdotally from social media, from text of, of a shooting here, shooting there. I mean, do you, do you feel that there's a safe place to go? I mean, you ran towards us to, to take cover in the news van even. So, I mean, do you feel there's a safe place to go right now? We saw lights and we sprinted. That was it. Yeah. We Did you see the laughing? We because there the, was no cops. We saw the cops with the giant guns near the bus stop. We ran with our hands up. I'm on the phone with my mom. I've got people blowing up my phone. I don't know where I need to go. I don't know where the suspect is. We have a vague description. We don't even know who, we don't know how many suspects there are. They're so worried, but yet they're outside chit-chatting with the news guy. Yeah, they're suspected, oh, one shooter, two, three, four. And they're supposedly everywhere. It was like, oh, they're at Brody, which is what, 30 minutes that way? So we're like, oh, it's fine. And then A little before then. Okay, Danny, this is the lady that I want Dub to look at. You know, the one lady he th thinks that keeps showing up everywhere. They never said, Chris, when their last practice was. If they have, I haven't found it yet. But this girl's mom, I want Dub to watch this because she vaguely reminds me of that mom he says keeps showing up everywhere. You know, playing different parts. This interview is very interesting, but I. I wasn't going to play as much of it, but it shows a lot of stuff over here, just like different clips and things. We didn't see photographs. So kind of listen to them, but also watch over the pictures. And then in a little while it blows them up good, but yeah. Um, I was sitting and my professor was lecturing and then I heard. Do they have classes at 815 at night? Cause that kind of made me wonder too. Like, it was either four, three or four, like, really, I could hear gunshots, like, directly behind my head, and I could see the smoke, like, gunpowder or something from the weapon firing, and then I could smell, and immediately I dropped to the floor with all my classmates, and someone was yelling that there was a shooter, and everybody needed to get down on the ground, and at that moment, I um, thought that I was going to die. I was so scared. Um, I didn't cry, which is surprising for me. Um, I just like kind of kept quiet and I called my mom 
And mom, what did you hear on the phone? I, I, I heard like three gunshots and screaming and we jumped in our car and drove up. All right. I got to interrupt here. I don't know how dumb this girl is or her mom, but she is on the phone with her mom. Her mom hears the gunshots. Why is the mom not saying, put your damn phone away and go dive under a desk or a closet? And why is the girl chatting with her mom if she's hearing boom, 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 and she's smelling the gunfire and the powder and all this stuff she's going to say? And it's like, this just kills me. I mean, irresponsibility on both parts. It's like, I'm not chit-chatting on the phone while something like this is going on in my class. There. Um, and after um, I heard those gunshots, um, my classmates in the back of the classroom started to scream for help. Hmm. And my other classmates jumped into action and tr trying to help everyone. If it weren't for my classmates helping everyone, I don't think that we would have all made it because immediately someone was like, we need to break open this window. We need to break open this window. So they immediately, immediately after he was done like firing and the kids in the back were screaming for help, um, I saw a boy and he like had his shirt off and he was running to see if he could go and close the door because the shooter, he came in through the back door. So there's a door here and there's a door here and he came through the back and he just started attacking people. And um, I will never forget the screams of my classmates as they were like screaming in pain for help. And after they got the window open, they started to guide people through. And it's um, a weird window because the bottom is like a small rectangle and it's about this big and it only kind of opens like one way, kind of tilts down. But the top was like a larger pane, but there it's way harder to crawl over it because it's like way high up. And I was really scared and people were crawling through the window. And I'd say I was like one of the like either first-ish kind of people or like maybe like in the middle to climb out the window. But there was a boy in my class and he was waiting outside the window and he was catching people and helping people down. And I'm so grateful that he was there to help people out of the window so they wouldn't fall and they could run away. And as soon as I felt like fell out of the window, I kind of like hit the ground a little and then I didn't have my laptop and I didn't have my textbook. I just grabbed my backpack and my phone. And I just remember I just ran for my life. I didn't know where the guy was. All right, I'm going to interrupt again, and this is just plain devil's advocate. She's explaining how they have to squeeze out of this little tiny rectangular window, but yet she thinks of grabbing her backpack. There's a dude blasting into your room, and you don't just freaking dive out that window and take off running. I just, a lot of kids I heard give interviews talking about their laptop and their drink i saw a whole string of kids evacuating they had like you know their thermal cups with them and i'm just like you're supposed to be like running for your life what's the deal here i assume he was somewhere in the vicinity i just kind of looked around and just ran and um that's what my other classmates did as well when they were exiting they just kind of ran in all sorts of directions and my boyfriend um, Cameron, he's also a sophomore at Michigan State, and he usually comes and picks me up from that class. So he'll usually come and sit in the lobby at 8.30. Um, he didn't um, because his roommate was actually sick and he was helping him. So I think if my boyfriend was there, um, he would have definitely gotten injured um, for sure. So I almost think that was like, I don't know, like a miracle or something that really? he was not there when. Damn it, Michelle, I'm so glad you're here, but we needed you at the beginning. I was going to bring you on the stream with me, and there was a bunch of stuff at the beginning of this that we totally wanted your opinion on. Everyone kept saying, where's Michelle and Dub? And I thought maybe since it was Valentine's Day, everyone was out to dinner. Yeah, Chris, I know. Tell your daughter to throw a chair out the window. My kids always knew, like, the safety things if, if something like this happened. So I'm glad that guy did think of the window. The shooter or thing. That, that is the My name is Isabel. All right, this girl seems 
very rehearsed. And the only reason I'm playing her video is because on Twitter, they were spreading it all over, talking about how rehearsed it seems. And if she was at home the next day, I don't think it's really that odd that she seems rehearsed. Maybe she made notes or whatever. But because they were making such a big deal about it on Twitter, I was going to play it. And I'm a senior here at Michigan State University. Over the past three years, I have made some amazing memories, met great people, and formed meaningful relationships with my professors. Never once did I feel unsafe or fearful for my, for my life on this campus. And today, that all changed. I felt like a hostage in my own home, looking out the window, ducking, turning off the lights, scared when a car drove by, because the campus was on lockdown, listening to the police scanner tonight. Um, there's no words to describe the feelings that I and my friends felt tonight. There's just no words. Nobody should ever feel this way or be in a situation like this, especially one of my friends who was taking an exam and the police barged in the room and said to her and her fellow classmates that they needed to hide and run. Okay, I'm finding that sentence odd just for the fact that the police were outside supposedly keeping things under control and hunting down a killer. So I really think it's odd that they would knock on their door, tell them there's a shooter and tell them to hide, especially since the school had already sent the alert out, you know, hide, run, fight, whatever. So it's like every kid in the class would have already gotten that text. So it's like, why would the police have the need to knock on the door? I found this sentence very weird. Because there was an active shooter. And she was, and she ran, and she was without her phone and her computer and her personal items for hours. And the fear that myself and my roommates felt in that moment, indescribable. We thought that our friend was hurt, injured. We didn't know if she was alive even. And it wasn't until she got one of her classmates' phones and contacted us through social media that we knew she was okay. When is... Michelle, there was a mass shooting with three killed and five in critical condition at uh, Michigan State University last night. You must have been gone all day and totally missed this. It was a quick one. It started at 8.15 or 8.19 last night, and within four hours, they had the guy. He committed suicide. You know the, you know the drill. Enough, enough. This situation should have never happened today. Okay, and I think this is the end of my pre-recorded video, so I need to figure out how to get it off the stream. I might need your help, Danny. Okay, is it off the stream and you're back to seeing me? Um, sorry, we had all the technical difficulties at the beginning. Um, I definitely, definitely need Matt to do these. I got a um, kind of interesting thing to tell you. Uh, my kids were all raised to, you know, never have your back to the door if you're someplace. Always know where the two exits are. Always be alert. You know, if someone drops a backpack at the mall, be suspicious. I mean, I didn't raise them to be paranoid. I just raised them to be safe. So, and they were kind of badass kids. So, um, we moved to Texas for a couple years. And when I got there, the school had sent a letter out that said, and I'd also heard this from other parents, that a couple times a year they have active shooter drills with the SWAT team, and they do not tell the teachers, and they take teachers hostages. And the kids have rules of what they need to follow, but nobody knows when this drill is coming. So I went in and talked to the principal, and I'm like, look, I don't mean to be a troublemaker, but I don't want my kids suspended because I have kids that will not follow those rules. If their teacher is being held hostage or they think there's an active shooter, 
they're going to try to, they're not going to do the duck and cover under the desk. They're going to try to escape. They're going to try to confront the guy if they can. They're definitely not going to watch their teacher be held at gunpoint. So I'm going back and forth with this principal trying to convince them. It's like, I need your agreement that my children will not be suspended for not following the rules. So finally, after we went back and forth for like 10 minutes, he's like, okay, he goes, how about this? When there is an active shooter drill coming, even though they're secret, I will let you know 24 hours in advance and please keep your children home that day and don't send them to school. And I I was cracking up. I thought that was hilarious. But I was like, no, all kids should be trained to take care of this stuff. I mean, I know that they need to go and hide, but it's like if they have a chance to help other students or help their teacher, it's like, why would you tell them to just go cower in a corner? And I know it's probably safer for the kids to do that, but my kids just don't have that in them. They're just not that type. I mean, they all own guns and know how to protect themselves and kind of done survivalist training and stuff. So anyways, I thought that was a funny story. Does anybody, oh, true seeker. Oh, they were in Texas in school. They're in their high 30s now. So this was a while. Around 9-11. They actually were in um, high school during nine, when 9-11 happened. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, how long ago they were in Texas. Um, the weird thing is when we lived in Texas, our street address was 9-11. And then 9-11 happened when we lived in that house. So that's why my email actually has 9-11 on it. That's when I first got an email. Um Chris says teachers gave out scissors. Um, Mike says public education is a fail, especially advertising gun-free zones. I can't agree with you more. We have somebody that's in our chats a lot, Pastor Mo. Her husband and her are pastors. They run a church, and they actually keep armed guards at the church, inside and outside the door. Because they're like, we're not sitting here being sitting ducks for a... um, you know, one of those church shooters to come in. So, I mean, there's some people you just got to know. Oh, Kim, Texas was hardcore. They were hardcore with the guns and the training and everything. It's like, um, I thought it was shocking when they told me that they did the real drills without the teachers even knowing and teachers got taken hostage. And they'd been doing a couple of them a year for a few years. And to me, I was like, you are going to panic stricken a whole entire school of kids. I mean, at least when other schools do drills, the kids kind of know they're coming and they certainly don't take their teachers hostages. Um, Anyways, is there anyone in the chat that wants to come up and talk or should we just end it now? I didn't have time to get too much information because last night, like I said, I had the uh, the TV on my local Detroit news. And then I had four or five different things pulled up on YouTube where I was watching different angles live. And then today I spent probably only 20 minutes on Twitter and had enough to throw this slideshow together. And then I was gone for part of the day today. So uh, I'm sure there's way more out there. If you want to do YouTube searches, Twitter, I haven't even gone on TikTok or Snapchat yet, but um, hang on. I'm looking for, I thought Michelle just put a comment in there. Did I accidentally delete it? Michelle will. Okay, let me find the the link and put it in here. Go ahead and click on the link, Michelle, and then come in the basement. Danny, you want to come on here too? Oh, Danny with the globe. It's funny because I went to lunch with my niece today. And she's not as conspiratorial as us. And I was like, she wanted to watch the YouTube channel. And I was like, well, you know, I go, you got to be prepared. It's like our chat is usually pretty conspiratorial. He goes, oh, no, not the moon people, huh? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we got the moon people. (laughs) And I thought of you, Danny. Um, Let me know when you're in the basement, um, Michelle. Um, We don't have our regular crowd in the chat of the... uh, automatic false flag people so uh and i'm also a little paranoid they're going to take my video down because i've already got a strike so just kind of be gentle when you get up here um 
But anyways, oh, I see you in the basement. Okay, good. Everybody, welcome Michelle Frost. She's a really good friend of mine. She also has a YouTube channel. Um, Danny, if you want to, do you have a branch? Yeah, if you want to put Michelle's link in here so everyone can go subscribe to her channel, also put the link to your channel in so people can put the link or can go subscribe to you. Danny has a ton of really good videos and he plays the best music around. Um, Matt, yes, we're still going to do our live stream tomorrow night on um, the Vegas shooting. Matt and I already had a live stream for tomorrow uh, planned out because that new FBI Freedom of Information Act thing came out and we had time to like go through and read it and dissect it a little bit more so yeah tomorrow night on my channel eh, we haven't figured out a time yet but i'm guessing probably nine ish eastern but we'll post it um in the, the mid afternoon so you'll know you'll get a heads up on when it's coming um shay says incoming does that mean you're coming in the chat too okay michelle take it away so you didn't even know there was a shooting oh uh, i think i think danny told me a little bit about it uh, or briefly or something, or I saw something in Michigan shooting. I just hadn't had time to look into it. Um, and My so cousin texts me. I didn't even have the TV or YouTube on last night. She texts me and she's like, did you hear about this? And I'm like, no. And she starts flying off. You know how early when they first happen, you find all this stuff and then later it disappears. So she's flying me off stuff, and that's why I turned everything on. And we were actually listening to scanner traffic, and it's like, I'm going, where are the helicopters? I'm, like, watching this feed on all these different feeds, and it's like you only see one ambulance, and they're taking their time, lollygagging around. So they're also not frantically hunting for these possible three shooters, even though they ended up with one. And also, I'm like, why aren't the news helicopters up in the air? They're always up in the air filming, you know, the aerial view. And then we heard on the scanner, Homeland Security had a helicopter up there. And I'm like, what the fuck are they doing here? So, yeah, there was some really weird stuff, but a lot of it's disappeared already. And I've noticed on YouTube, when you do searches for stuff now, like you type something in the search bar, all the mainstream media stories come up. But none of the channels like, like us or anyone else it's like covering things or posted cell phone footage or helicopter footage or anything like that it's like everything's just mainstream media on any topic and it's all cleaned up and it's starting to tick me off okay. i've even started putting tags in some of my videos just weird tags just so i can type the word in and see if it shows up in a search and it's like nope can you can you do me a favor since i i'm blinded on this one can you give me the numbers like how many, how many shot, how many killed, how many shooters, how many of that? Okay. Just give me the numbers. All right. Three dead, five in the hospital in such bad condition that they are possibly going to die. Um, one shooter found him like 40 miles away, even though this campus is like a big city. This whole thing was done and wrapped up in less than four hours. He comm committed suicide. I read in a bunch of feeds that it was a suspected suicide. So put suspected in qu air quotes and he's dead. It was a black guy, age 43, had no connection to the school, didn't use an AR, used a pistol and had been in jail on gun violations and wasn't supposed to have a gun. So pretty much that's it in an eggshell. <laughs> um, someone had told you in chat, I don't know if you caught it, there were Oxford shooting students there and also a Sandy Hook survivor there. So the Sandy Hook survivor gave an interview. And when I saw Sandy Hook mentioned, it was like when I was doing the Gabby Petito thing and saw the Sandy Hook video. It's like my jaw just dropped. I'm like, how fucking coincidental is this? <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for, you know, David Hogg to show up on an interview from Parkland. Right. So, yeah, right. that's the long and short of it. So three killed. Yes, three dead for sure. And the other five are iffy. Injured. Yeah. All students, no teachers. And so three killed, uh, shooter dead, five injured. Hmm. So do you want to come up? Yes. Oh, Athrenus is here. Hi, Athrenus. 
Hi, I haven't Serena. seen you in a How while. Are you? I'm not following the chat very good. Um, Joe says I heard poor little Sandy Hook survivor was at MSU. Yes, she was. <laughs> she watched her first grade teacher get shot. I got to tell you what, if I was a Sandy Hook kid and saw all that crap happen in first or second grade, I probably wouldn't be wanting to continue my education anywhere. Well, let me just let you know. And, and now I'm she's on the news pushing the gun control like crazy. Well, if I was at Sandy Hook and if I was a Sandy Hook survivor, it wouldn't have been a, a real thing. So Sandy Hook didn't happen <laughs> because the school was closed for, what, three or four years? And oh, I'm 100% with you on that one. <laughs> I mean, so, we can't say, and they were I all try not to Super say Bowl. Sandy Hook <laughs> because then they end up you know, zapping our channels and giving us strikes and stuff. So I try to be real careful, like, when I'm up here talking. Too much about the conspirator conspiratorial FF stuff. But in the chat, it's like I love when everyone's typing the stuff in. But right. it's like when I'm on here, I figure YouTube's filtering an algorithm like the words we say. So, uh, yeah, so I always try to say FF, but I thought Sandy Hook was safe to say, though, tonight because there was the girl made a video, posted the video. Now she's all over pushing for gun control, just like all the parents from Newtown. So anyways, now you're all caught up. All right. So let me I, I, I'll, I'll be careful what I say, but let me let me just say this. Um, there's a difference between an FF and a in a H O A X um, and, or a staged event, um, there's a total difference. So when, when people um, say an FF, an FF means that people have been killed, but it's a government ran operation. Well, I'm thinking with this one that that's a possibility because they've instantly jumped on the politics and the gun control. But I'm also thinking since all these kids were locked in the room frantic and none of the kids really saw anything, I'm also thinking that um, they may have been running a drill and these students didn't even know. So they've got like tens of thousands of kids like totally they're PTSD and them out to the max. And then... I mean, first of all, two buildings got shot up and the time frame, I mean, we had the map out and we're timing. It's like he couldn't have got to this building that quick for the time you heard the shots coming out. And I think that it's possible that they ran an exercise and these students don't even know about it. Right. And then, okay, the three dead and the five injured, it's like, okay, did they sacrifice some lambs to uh, push their gun control agenda, or are there no lambs? I mean, I hate to think that way, but we've seen this enough times that it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Danny says, drop and give me four or five. <laughs> well, I mean, I have to look into this before I can really say much, but... Um... To me, it's fake until proven real. And uh, well, absolutely. I know that I've always told you guys that it's like you can't know in a day. You got to really look into it. And it's like I watched for four hours last night and I looked into it for maybe an hour today. And it's like I've already kind of got my opinions. So I apologize for all the times I told you guys you can't know that quick because I didn't run a background report on the shooter yet or these interview people yet. And I usually like do all that and spend so much time coming to my conclusion, like garlic, you know how that festival was. But I always kind of criticize the people that instantly jump to the conclusion. It's like, I think this time I might be, uh, I'm still going to look for more information but I'm a little skeptical of some of the things that I saw and heard last night. Okay, so let me ask you this: did they did they did they have any uh, personal videos on this? Um, at the very beginning of this video, I showed three clips that I found. Um, two were students taking video out the window. And one was actually kids in a classroom yelling, don't open the fucking door, almost like um, Parkland was. Okay. You know, it's the cops. No, it's not. Lock the door. You know, other kids yelling. So I have hunted and hunted and hunted. But like I said, I was busy today. So I only hunted on Twitter for about an hour. 
and I didn't go over to TikTok, but usually the TikTok people, they end up over on Twitter too. So I haven't found that much student footage really. Let me I, let me just say this on my on 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 my side of the fence, um, and it this goes back as far as Vegas. If you are in the middle of a mass shooting or a shooting or anything, the last thing you're gonna do is start filming it. You're gonna run. I don't well, care who you are. I don't care. I, 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 I don't care who you are, because I know when I'm I'm at home, and I hear a very close shooting right by my house i get it's duck and cover well i don't i don't sit there for the gun. Oh, oh, oh let me go run outside and film whoever's shooting up the 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 neighborhood exactly and i played video earlier of kids chit-chatting with the news crews well police are still buzzing around and they hadn't caught the guy yet and i'm like why aren't they telling these people to get their butt inside and, and lock themselves well, up. Nobody's going to sit there and go, oh, I want to grab my phone and start looking out the window because I hear gunshots. Think about that. It's got to <laughs> be reality. People got to start thinking critically with their heads and say, is is that really what people are going to do? Are they going to duck and cover because they're afraid to get shot? Dub needs to watch this because there's a clip of a mom and I'm not saying it, it looks like Jane, but it's like, you know, he always oh. does the nose match and all that stuff. So I'm curious to see if he thinks that that's worth mentioning. Right. Well, we'll, we'll be looking into this because and I'm sure double have he'll have some good uh, things to well, say. About he's it. looked into more. Like I said, I haven't spent that much time on this. I've been busy. Oh, it was just cool. kind of like something that fell on my lap last night at like 8 15. Dub, Dub is right here. So go ahead. Dub. Oh, good. Yeah. Let me make a, a here. Come on, a, Dub. You want to come on the thing or just talk through Michelle? Well, yeah. because we're, we're at the, we're, we're using the same mic. We, we oh, yeah. yeah okay. I, I well, everybody for... welcome Dub. <laughs> he is awesome. He's, He's been around with me since the Vegas community. I don't know, research community. I don't know how long before that he was around. But Dub is the one that dissects the films and the interviews and compares them to other videos and interviews and people's faces and all kinds of stuff. Dub is just awesome. So anyways, welcome, Dub. And I'm going to turn it over to you, and Michelle, and I'm going to mute for a minute. Thank you. Uh, last night, I watched a 33-minute and 30-second <laughs> news conference on this event. And if you watch that news conference and pay attention to what's said, you'll know that it was one of those HOs. Period. Point blank. So I watched the news conference, and that's when my interest got peaked. You're exactly right. That early one. I was like, what the fuck? Okay, I'm going yeah, back to yeah. mute because I don't want to keep interrupting you. But uh, yeah, that's when my spidey senses started going up. And that and when the scanner had Homeland Security helicopter up above. It was like, yeah, that was shady too. Yeah, yeah. And and that's really all it takes. It doesn't take a week to realize uh, because there, there are certain things you can look for right off the bat. And if you find them, if there, there's no mixture of real and not real. If you see something that is fake, then you it's gotta put a label on it. See, and I agree with Dub, and I want you to speak more, Dub. But uh, what I'm saying is, you can't mix the two. Everybody thinks that you can mix the two, that you can have in this tent. Uh, the, the ones that are actors, and then in this tent, you're going to have the real people getting shot. You, you, you I'm guilty mix. of the mixing. You just yeah. can't mix it. it you know yeah. me, I it, try to make sense have of too it much and try to make the there. fake you stuff and the real it. stuff match. You can't and, mix yeah. it. You can't. You can't control it. So you guys are hardcore. It, 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 all has to be, it all has to be a staged event, or it has to be a real event. It, you can't mix the two because there, 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 there's just the, you just can't you can't it control work. it. Totally does not work. It's either one way or the other. Yeah, you just can't. You have too much uh, contradiction. So you, you you can't go okay. 
Okay, now all the real people run out. Oh, okay, wait, you stop real people, get shot. Bloom, 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 bloom. Okay, now we're going to have the fake people in the other tent. Okay, wait, hold on. Run down the road and, 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 and wave as you're running by the cameras. You know, well, I will it, tell you this. You just can't, there you was can't, a news crew at the hospital and there was zero activity. You can't. And I'm telling you, if five kids were on their deathbed and they hadn't notified the parents yet and no one could get a hold of their kids, that hospital should have been crawling, crawling with parents. And it was like dead as could be. And I thought that was suspicious. We also had the, like I said, the repeat, you know, same with Vegas. The you just have to think issue. critically with your head. Yeah. If it's a production, it's a production. If it's not and it's real, they're not going to mix the two. They can't. They can't. They can't be like, okay, it's your turn now, fake. It, no, it's your turn now. But they can lock down a whole college full of kids <laughs> they that can don't know what's going on. It's a drill. Well, sure. No, of but those kids can. might not know what's going on, and they're doing their little show somewhere they else. They can lock down any building, anywhere, any school. They can lock it all down if it's a drill. But or if it's a fake, it, it, but, but the kids real, inside might not know real, that. That's what I'm saying. If they might not real, be part of it. You're not. If it's real, you're not going to have people taking video. People are going to be duck and running wherever they can go. I am not going to stay. I'm telling you, I'm a gun owner, and I am not going to stay where there's gunshots being. You know, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't carry mine everywhere I go. I do, but I don't, not on my hip. But what I'm saying is, if I don't care, if if I hear gunshots in in public, I the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to be pulling out my phone, going, oh, let me see if I can take video of it. That is, that's nonsense. It's nonsense. I it's wouldn't. Well, the shooting was going on, but nonsense. I might later go to hunt for some blood and proof of death. You know, you're going to be running. Yeah. You're yeah. you're going to be trying to find a way out. You're going to be trying to go here. You're going to try. I don't care where what atmosphere you're in. You are not going to sit here and go. Let me pull my phone out so I can film this. You're not, especially if you're in the middle of chaos. You're just not going to do it. Exactly. That's that's critical thinking to me. That you know you have to you have to sit back and you have to go. Hmm. Would this really happen in reality? And that's where I'm coming from. Go ahead, Doug. And I analyze the videos. And if you learn to analyze videos, you can watch the videos and tell really quickly if this is a real video or if it's fake. And if it's fake, everything is. And it's, it's really simple. It really is very simple to detect the situation pretty rapidly. And I, I know a lot of people have a hard time to wrap their head around that. But really, it does not take long if you know what to look for and you find it right off the bat. You know, everybody wants to believe uh, I, everywhere I look. You can call me names. You can think different of me. I, I really don't care. But let me tell you. I love you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. Nothing that is coming. I mean, every turn, every nook and cranny. If you guys believe this is real, this is real, this is real. We have been lied to all of our lives. All of our lives. Everything. I'm telling you, and it is now pouring on thick. I'm not saying people don't die. I'm not saying people don't get shot. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying anything that's publicized on the mainstream media, media, no matter what, is you got you got to evaluate what they're telling you because. 99.9% .9 of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, they are lying to the public. And they Absolutely. are, that's called the Smith Month Modernization Act 2012, period, in a nutshell. Yep. And again, back to the things to look for, uh, there are certain things that just, you know, Stand out like a bright light that you can look for, and, and when you see them, 
um, and that they they occur in almost all of the events, almost all of them. The things that you find uh, are repetitive, and it's just I I know I'm an auto hoaxer, and I'm glad I am because I uh, I love you guys. Even but though Joe, you're Joe, auto says, Joe says Joe Ross. I says, turned into one I pretty quick with we this don't one. Know, Less than uh, 24 hours, and I figured this George out. George Floyd was fake. Uh, for one I thing. don't think he was fake. <laughs> that you was, guys love the that last very I'd like to yeah, have you I, come I, on I, here. I can show, I can show you. <laughs> George and, Floyd and, was a very big sign. Uh, yes, um, extremely big and very, very successful sign. Period. Uh, anybody that, that uses Google Earth, look up 38 in Chicago and Milwaukee and look at what they've done to that corner. It's a shrine to the PSYOP. It, it's, it's really kind of crazy that they've done well, that. Even, but, even if it's a shrine, it, 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 I know that you guys think you know I'm coming on your yeah. channel and, and I'm I'm probably saying way too much and I'm so sorry. Oh, you're good. But I'm just saying, you know, you got to look into these things and you have to you have to break it all down. I know Joe found George Floyd's legs and and everything that you know we were trying to show him the torso of whatever. Yes. But it was a psyop. I, regardless whether you found his legs or you didn't find his legs or what you, what you think, it was a psyop. It was a 100% psyop, and it worked, and they're still using it. it. Yes, yes, it worked extremely well. And it anybody that thinks it was anything other than a psyop... They've if, been fooled. If you study <laughs> uh, day three of the trial, and... The body cams, it will show you 100% it was a staged event. And let me, let me just say this real quick. Any trial that's held, those are even yeah. those are even productions. But let me tell you, when a trial is held on videos alone as part of the investigation and part of the uh, part of the judgment, is that really reality? Think about that. No. No. They're going to use videos to to make a judgment call to to see if they can find someone guilty or not. They're not going to have investigators coming in and da da da. da. No, they're using videos. They never ever 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 used videos before, but now all of a sudden, everything in a trial is based on videos. That's well, this not guy reality. Either. That's not reality. That's the, not reality. The Nicholas Cruz trial. Well, you're, gonna, you're, you're hitting major, a soft spot right there. Joke. He pled guilty, so then they have this <laughs> big long <laughs> trial, and it's like, give that, me a break. That's oh, okay God. that he pled joke, that he pled guilty. It's still a joke. But then it was a political thing for life or death, and it's like, come on. Exactly. He was MK altered or whatever. He went along with something. There, he doesn't. Exist. I would like to find someone that could actually go visit him. But, Kim but, lives near there. She's in the chat. I wonder I if she could you, find a way to get I on his visitor you, list. You look up anybody that's been put in prison for any type of kill, killing or mass shooting. You will not find them anywhere in a prison. Charles exactly. Manson was in prison. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was uh, in prison. Uh, Oh, the, Ted Bundy was, was in prison. Wait a minute. Are you no, sure? No, 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 back up. Are you sure? I'm what positive. Jay Simpson. What do you think about that one? That was also a psyop. Yes. That was a big psyop. If you study, it goes far, far, far way back. Way they've been doing this a long, long time. Many, 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 many things years. that most people believe were real were not really real. Um, Are we in the Matrix? What that? No, I don't even buy the Matrix baloney. This is life. This is the world. As long as you're not in the moon with Danny. Well, I'm. Um, that's another subject as well. 
<laughs> I, I could go into that, but I'll spare you for this time. Well, I was telling him earlier before he got here, I went to lunch with my niece today, and I told her we were doing the live stream, and I she was going to maybe watch, and I was like, well, you got to be prepared, because it's like, we're pretty conspiratorial on there, and, and he's like, or she goes, um, do you, like, mean like you have, like, the moon people, and the I'm like, people. oh, yeah, we are moon people. <laughs> how, how about the, mo the no, no plane people for 9-11? I'll tell you what, I've been watching a lot of stuff lately on the Pentagon, Dub. I've been looking through a lot of stuff you've pointed me towards. And, and if you study it, the best video I've seen on the Pentagon was behind the smoke curtain. That pretty much lays out a lot of information. There was no planes. There was no planes, period. Period. None. No planes crashed. Well, in. I'll tell you what. The Pentagon was something else. There was no plane there. And out in that field, that third plane, <laughs> there was, there was no nothing there. there either. Right. So it's like okay. those two I'm 100% on. I'm still not 100% on okay. the other. CGI takes control of the Internet everywhere you look. Columbine, all of these psyops, they're all... Columbine was a very the very foot first school shooting, and that also was a psyop. People know you guys. You guys have to look into this stuff. But what I'm saying is, it's all a programming. It's a brainwashing. It's all to put fear into everybody so they can turn into the turn in their guns. And that and, and not happening for me. The, the common thing in everything is fear. Uh, we have fake shootings in churches, so you can't even go worship without being in fear. Well, and then they threw COVID in. It's like got us all comfortable being yeah. locked what in What about Walmart? House. You can't even go to Walmart anymore. You can't, you can't go to Walmart. You can't you, walk down the street yeah. of Washington because you're going to get I, shot up. That's right. You, you can't, can't go to a concert because you're going to get shot up. Can't go to your grocery store. You can't go. Well, they your... put fear into everybody. That's and, exactly right. And think it's... of think about how they... I don't even think people are afraid to go to these places. I think so oh. much is just soaked in and absorbed into them that they don't really want to go into them. They'd rather order it, but they're not thinking in their mind, I'm afraid to go to the store. But subconsciously they have been programmed this way. And if you watch the I know the the News conferences are really boring and dull, but if you watch them, all of them have, again, a, a very common theme, and the theme is you're not safe anywhere, no matter where you go, you're not safe. I have taught my kids since they were toddlers, you never have your back to the door and you find two exits as soon as you go in. Restaurant, yeah. mall, yeah, wherever you're at. Soundings at all times, yes. Yeah. You know, and other people are like, when my kids were little, going, you're going to raise some really paranoid kids. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm going to raise kids that live. And now they're all adults. One of them isn't uh, a survivalist, but the other two are like total preppers to the max, survivalists. And I'm like, well, I guess I didn't raise paranoid kids. I raised like prepared kids. And and back to the 9-11 thing, if, if you see there was no plane at the Pentagon and it's clear to see there was no planes in Pennsylvania. Oh then, no, nothing. Then why do we need the planes in the tower? Because we Because I can't it. figure out I know you figured it out, but I can't figure out how it's called they CGI it with all those people okay. they around CGI'd not noticing. They can put CGI into anything they could put CGI into a face, they to a, it, into a would the people on the ground still be able to film it and think it's real? Yeah, I have a I have a little video clip of the most famous plane going into the second tower, and you slow it down and do it frame by frame, and the plane just goes right into the tower. It doesn't crash into the tower. It just goes inside the tower. I have just, seen the videos where you see it do the little what you're talking about, 
And yeah. it's like, this shit raises my eyebrow. But I've already checked the Pentagon, Building 7, and Pennsylvania off my list. I'm just still yeah. with the well, tower. Well, the, the towers, like I say, I've got a video clip that, that I made of the most famous CNN version of it. And the plane goes right inside the building. And once it's inside the building, which is impossible because it's the strongest building there was on the planet at that time. And there's no damage to the building. And there's no parts fall off the plane. <laughs> just the entire plane goes, it just goes right in. Right in there. Don't forget about the passport and, intact on the ground. And and then if you, if you back the video up frame by frame, the plane comes back out of the building intact with no dents in it anywhere. Uh, hey, and, Chris, sorry you're late. We're almost finished. And, and that that should be clear enough to everybody to know that there was not a plane that crashed into the side of the tower because it would have crumpled like if you threw a, a can of a soft drink against the building. It's not going in there. I don't care if you shoot it out of a gun. When it hits that wall, like a bug on a windshield but the plane just does not go into those buildings without any damage to either one the plane or the building uh and there's there's just thousands of things like that that once you once you see them uh it it opens up the the easier path to see the next one and if you, if you build those these things they they just kind of come natural they really do you can't you can't unsee what you already can see you can't go backwards <laughs> you can't it i don't i i don't know how to explain it but once you can see it you can't unsee it and you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm just right on everything and, oh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever. It's, you just can't unsee it. Once you know and you see it, it, it there, there's a sigh up in every corner and everywhere we turn. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's space or it's, you know, when you've got fake astronauts. I'm pulling off fake space. <laughs> you got to start questioning it. You just got to. And, you know, you question everything. Don't listen to what I have to say, but question everything, everything. that they're pushing yeah. out because yes. they're going to a new world order and it's going to happen. I don't care what anybody says. It's going to happen. But they're doing an excellent job. Absolutely. And they know exactly what they're doing. And they All right, guys. I got to interrupt for a minute. I... Got an important phone call and I blew it off and now they called back and I need to take it. Okay. Do you guys want to end or do you want me to just mute and you guys take over? It's, oh, up, it's we, up to you. It's your show. Yeah. Well, it's up to you guys if you want to keep talking. Well, we, but the thing is, is I won't be here sure. and I don't want you to get my channel taken down. So oh, be we'll careful. Be <laughs> we'll be nice. We'll be All nice. right. I'm going to mute and you guys just keep going if you want. Right. Yeah, I got to <laughs> take this call. Take well, it away, Dub. Go going. Okay. That's, um, Everyone in the chat, be nice. Shay's in charge. If she's still there, if not, Joe and Danny and Chris are. Oh, I see. Shay's still there. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going. I'm muting. Okay. okay. Uh, Michelle, you want to? No, you go no. ahead. Okay. You take it I'll... away. They love you, Doug. Okay. <laughs> well, some maybe, but others I'm not so sure. But, and I know I'm animate. But I also know that I know what I'm talking about. And I know how to examine the videos and tell if they're fake or if they're real. And if if there, you see a fake video of, on an event, then it's a fake event. It, it's, it's really an easy... It's really it, simple, actually. Yeah, it really is that simple. Uh, 
once you know the pattern, you can see the pattern. Like I said, just question everything. 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 If you if if it doesn't sound quite right, check into it. You don't, you know, just look into it. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they're showing you. If if it's a if it's a type of shooting, just look into it. Don't you know? All they have to do nowadays is tell you it happened. They don't have to show you any evidence that it happened. They can show you fire trucks and and police cars <laughs> and five hundred five hundred uh, police uh, sitting there. But they're doing nothing, nothing. They got yeah. everything taped off, but they're standing around. You don't, you don't need eight hundred police at at a at a two person shooting. You just don't. Yeah, and the the one last night. You can't have a good investigation uh, if you're going to have that many people. Yeah, the uh, police came from all surrounding counties. Well. A shooting never lasts more than two minutes, and that's probably being very liberal with the time. So, uh, just like in the um, uh, Colorado Springs shooting, the sheriff from Denver came there. That's 35 miles away. The shooting's over with by the time the sheriff from Denver drives 35 miles. Uh, mm -hmm. And all of them do that, and the first thing they do is they praise all the first responders. The police did such a great job, even though the 27 people said to be shot and killed, the police did a fantastic job, and they prevented hundreds more from being killed. And that's a good point. You have one person that's been shot, or you have 28 people that have been shot. But the, but the police have done a super job. If they did a super job, nobody would have been shot. If it's going to be in a uh, no-gun zone, of course, you know, of course. It, it You know, what I'm saying is anytime there's a press conference, they have a press conference for every little thing. I don't care if it's your local news. I don't care if it's it's the mainstream media news. They have 5,000 press conferences. And once they sh show those pre press conferences, you got to know it's a production. It's not. Absolutely. It's, it, 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 that's a production in itself. Because how, how can they have that much time on their hands? Oh, they're like, okay, an hour later, they had a mass shooting. And then an hour later, they're, they're going, well, we're really looking into this guy. He's at large. And, you know. You got to start looking into the numbers, into the into the names. They'll tell you straight out by the names of these people. Um, it's it it's, it's yeah. insane. You know, it's just it's those kind of things you have to look into. It's not just by what you see with your eyes, but you got to you got to look into it. What they they love to put out their numbers. They love it. Yeah. And they leave, they love to do the double num the double names. Uh, double names. <laughs> the perpetrator will be uh, Billy Bacon or Margaret something last name with a a name. They they do that uh, or a, a Dean lot. Schiller or a Dean Schiller. Yeah, like Schiller. like the you know yeah. Dean Schiller. Uh, you know those kind of. You gotta. You just have to listen, and then go over it and over it and over it. And if they're covering it, on going, you know, I'm just. It's. I sound like a broken record, but you know, yeah. Some people think that I'm just uh, not saying anything that they don't already know. But then yet, you know, I don't know. I'm back. Are you guys doing anything to get my okay. channel deleted? <laughs> yeah, you're still on. You're still good. So YouTube um, didn't zap us yet. That was my brother. His wife had called. I just kind of did the hang up button. Oh, well, yeah. Then he called. So I was <laughs> like, okay, something's yeah. going on. They're like, we thought there was an emergency because we know you're always home at night. And I was like, no, we're doing a live stream. We're on to this MSU shooting. And his wife's going, I told you. I knew she would be jumping right on that and be busy <laughs> for two days. The guy goes in one dance hall and shoots people. And then 
he leaves there and the son that was in the the son of the owner of the first dance hall is at the second dance hall when this guy shows up and he takes his gun away from the guy. No. And says, just, you leave, you leave now, you go. So just, <laughs> and just look, what is the possibility or the, the ramifications? Yeah. Uh, the, the odds of that happening. And then after that, the guy that supposedly took the gun away, was it the uh, recent State of the Union message? They they showed this guy and gave him props for, for being a hero at the State of the Union message. That, you know, if think about that a little bit. You know, it's crazy. I can't stand by them. Biden, I, I Biden, totally hate Biden and all the liberal BS and the gun grab. Biden, Biden, the <laughs> he's Biden, a freaking puppet. I know he's not even making yeah, this. Biden, Biden, like all, Biden, like all the presidents, were put there for a purpose. There's no steal of an election. There's no but none of that. He's he's just he's just doing what he was chosen to do. Like, well, I got to tell you, truth in you, when you watch his videos, it's like he compares the stuff. It's like halftime. It, it's like, I'm not saying that it's not Biden on the podium all the time, but truth in you gets this stuff lined up and it's like, it's a head scratcher. It's like, hmm, you might be on to It's something. not even Biden in the White House. It's not even the same guy. It, People, that's why that's when I watch I truth in you, it's like he it. makes sense. Yeah. If it's not the same guy in the, in the <laughs> Black House, then, then yeah, is that not a psyop in itself? Exactly. Well, yeah. I think throughout the years, there's always someone else running it, and the president's always the nobody's puppet. running it in the in 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 Washington. It's yeah. the Illuminati. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's yeah. running it. Nothing. We've lost. We didn't even ever have. It. We're a corporation. We're a oh. corporation, period. They're all selected, not elected. There's voting. <laughs> mentioning, wait a minute, mentioning the Illuminati. I watched the Super Bowl the other day. I'm like all psyched watching this halftime show to see how many Illuminati symbols I can pick out. And I'm like, whoa. All I don't over think the there place, were any right? this time. Did yeah. you watch it? I didn't catch any. Like, usually oh, yeah, it's slamming you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle played it at the end of her live stream. And Sunday it, took, night. it took me down. And uh, they took you down because of copyright, because of her songs. Yep. Because of, she she replayed the. Uh, I wonder if you would have replayed it without sound and just narrated what you yeah, were finding. That, what did you my, find? That's my stupidity. <laughs> it took my whole live stream down. But I went three and a half hours and it, it was gone and that's what well, I played at the end. I don't like how YouTube now when you go to the vi someone's channel, it shows all their old videos and you have to like click on a button to see their lives. Yeah. Most of us do lives a, now. And it's like, okay, what was that to confuse Category our in there now. So you got to put all your, your lives are in a separate uh, heading than, than your other thing. But I'll uh, all kidding aside, I know to a lot of people we sound like cuckoo birds, but we're not. <laughs> uh, I would not be be spewing it if I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I would be. I I offered so many times during the the Vegas deal <laughs> to exchange information with people and nobody steps up and wants to exchange that hey you my, sent me a ton of stuff and taught me a lot of stuff yeah. way back in the day when we were emailing yeah and 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 there's that was a drop in the bucket i had tons 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 more on every, you do so much work at home i wish you would do like michelle and start having like a big channel Get some stuff rolling out there. You've got old work that like people need to see. 
I'm, I'm he's only... not a he's not a channel creator. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, but he's with you now, so you could teach him how. Oh, I don't got I don't I'm not a channel creator. <laughs> I'm telling Damn you, I, you guys, it, it's really hard. I used to make the best videos, let's, and now I just do the live streams. Let's, it's like let's I don't have the forget, time to piece everything together. Let's not forget, Dub is 82 years old. Okay, he's not. He's he, he's. He's he's a computer buff, that's for sure, and he he know he knows his shit. But let me tell you, it's it's it, you know, it's it's just not that easy, you know. The energy. I, you know, I can I can I can only I can only go out on my platform and speak the truth, whether anybody wants to believe it or not. That's on them. I'm just telling you, I would never. I'm a very honest, open, and that that I know. Why I'm here and for this I reason. Second that, absolutely. Oh, you know, if you guys hear from CC Crisis Cast, I drove through Kingman, Arizona, two weeks ago when I was there. I was like, "Oh, this town is so cool," and I remembered he said he lived in that area. Yeah, but if you really, and I really have documented everything. I made videos, but if I made a video and posted it on YouTube, two people would see it because <laughs> that's how long it would be up. Because, oh, you think they'd take it down right away? Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Thumper got a lot of stuff taken down. He's kind of disappeared. Yeah. He had good shit. Uh, yes. He's got his own shit going on. He's yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's all right. We've heard from him. All right, so you've talked to him. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I should yeah. give him a call. Yeah, yeah he's I, good. I, I still stay in in touch with Tom. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm gonna cut this off because we've been going oh. for a while, and I'm getting wore out, and I got okay. like a breathing issue. So well, thank you for having us on. I'm sorry uh, yeah. that you know we had. Oh, you guys did great. Yeah. <laughs> Go back and watch the beginning, and you'll see that clip of the Sandy Hook girl. She gives oh, like okay. an interview. Be cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll be looking into this. We'll do that. Yeah. Um, it's not even an interview. She's like giving like a video statement. Like, I don't know what she did on Snapchat or well, TikTok or whatever. I found it on Twitter. Gotta, but it's her giving like a speech. That's got to be something that makes it, little bells ring in your head. Well, and you got all these, uh, just real quick, you have all these shootings that, oh, I've been in this shooting and I've been in that shooting and, and I'm a survivor of this shooting. That just think about that. You know, people from California to California to uh, Vegas to wherever. I mean, th that's just that's just not real. That's not real, and it's not reality. Jan has been in. Oh, I think we found Jan tonight. You got to go take a look. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have. To I could be that. wrong, but when I saw this lady, I was like, "Dub's got to take a look at her." We'll we'll and, we'll, and we'll, we'll we'll find her. If that's her. We'll then her. <laughs> then in Orlando, and Vegas, and several other events, and that just doesn't happen because all these events took place in in different states, far from each other. Question everything, everybody. Question everything. <laughs> Don't believe me. Just question everything. Absolutely. Definitely look into stuff yourself. Yes. All yes. right. I love you guys. We're going to cut off and everyone have a good night and watch tomorrow night. Me and Matt are supposed to be going live, going over that, that next PDF freedom of information request that showed up. It's a whole bunch of redacted shit, but we found some funny stuff. Vegas, we're gonna go Vegas it. was a sigh up. But anyway, uh, thank oh, damn you, dog. <laughs> People really died. We're never going to agree. No, on they no, 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 no. We're no. never going to agree no. on this. People no. died and no. got shot. No, no. no I way. think they got shot by multiple like, shooters. Like, I don't believe Stephen with Paddock did exactly, it. Exactly. And I can show you a thousand reasons. Why nobody died there? Well, we all can. Yeah. Um. <laughs> thank you, True Seeker. You have a good night. I hope you feel better. And uh, we're out. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and I'm thanks right. everyone in the chat. And we will see you tomorrow for mine and Matt's live stream. It'll probably be nine Eastern. We haven't decided yet, but just so you guys know, everyone have a good night and happy Valentine's Day. And 
I will see you guys later. Thank you, Dub and Michelle.